Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we're going to be looking at how to build your own uh, Hercules binaries from source code. Before we go into how to do that, um, we should have a, a brief explanation of what the state of Hercules development is today. As you may know, Hercules started uh, written by a gentleman called <clears throat> Jay Main uh, actually not Jay Maynard. What was there? The original um, was okay by Roger Bowler. So Hercules was created by this gentleman uh, in the UK called Roger Bowler, and he started developing it in the late nineties, and then this gentleman here, Jay Maynard, took it over and started maintaining it and, and starting added, adding significant enhancements. Then this uh, other person here, Jan Jaeger, designed implemented many of the advanced features and uh, brought the Z architecture support, 64-bit support to Hercules. Now, and in the beginning, Hercules worked and we saw that he was good if you allow me to interpret freely from Genesis from the Bible. And, and um, soon enough, uh, other people started to add on to it. And there were many articles were written and, uh, and Hercules made great progress. In late early 2000, I think, somebody went and asked IBM for the for the source code of MBS 3.8 and the distribution libraries, which IBM did provide on the tape. And from there, um, MBS 3.8 was built for Hercules and the distribution was made by this uh, other gentleman called um, Volker Turnkey 3 Hercules MBS. Yeah, so Volker made a distribution and, uh, and and for many years, for at least eight or nine years, people were using this distribution and it was good. And he had a compilers to it and he made it really amazing. Then Jürgen Winkelmann came along and from the from university in Switzerland and wrote TK4 and the S3.8, which was a, an enhancement of the turnkey three and that's why he calls it turnkey four minus because he thinks it's not quite his right to uh, up the number from three to four, but I think it is well deserved to be called turnkey four. And the N obviously here, Turkey, refers to the fact that the for many years, the, the mascot animal of MVS was the turkey. And there's all history to that, why people call it turkey, because it was slow, etc. But turkey is kind of the, the turkey animal is the mascot of MBS, and so they play here on the turkey name and call it turnkey because it, you only have to start it up and everything is installed. You don't have to install MBS yourself, which is not an easy thing to do, cisgening and everything. So, and then, um, and this was all based on, um, on Hercules. Later on, people started to realize that, uh, and Hercules progressed all the way to Hercules, to, I think 3.13, 3.13. Both, both in 32-bit and 64-bit mode. And uh, about, I want to say maybe five, six years ago, maybe already seven or eight years ago, I'm not sure, people said it's time to open up development for Hercules 4.0, which was going to have a whole bunch of enhancements. And that's where the history of Hercules gets really interesting. So uh, they called the new version of Hercules, they called it Hyperion, Hercules And the main developer of Hercules Hyperion became a person who's very well known in the Hercules community called Fish. And so Fish GitHub Hercules Hyperion, just so we can get his picture. Uh, nope, that's not him. I think, yeah. So this is Fish. His near name is David Trout, and hence Fish. 
he became the main developer of, of the 4.0 branch called Hyperion. Now, as development shifted to GitHub, things started to heat up maybe two, three years ago, and where there were differences of opinion, as is the tradition in open source development. I've been doing open source development for nearly 20 years now, and uh, there are always different of uh, differences of opinion. There are always differences of direction. People want to pull the source code to where they think is right. And so it's not uncommon for uh, open source development to be split. And so what happened is that we, Hercules Hyperion development, uh, which is now the main development branch, everything that, that you see now and then new releases of MVS um, 3 still come out but those develop but those three dot something releases are backports of features that made it into Hyperion and they're being backported to the three uh, dot whatever number 13 uh, uh, branch is of the source code maintenance but all the new and main development and that's very important to understand is on Hyperion uh, Hercules 4.0. However, as I was just saying, uh, people, some of the key developers of, of um, Hyperion had differences of opinions. And so I can count right now probably four main branches of, of Hi Hyperion development. One is the one uh, by, done by uh, Fish himself. He has a company called Software Development Laboratories. And that's the same website where you find things like the GUI for the Windows um, graphical user interface for Hercules, Herc Print, which for which I have a couple of licenses, which produces beautiful, beautiful prints for anything that comes out of a of a mainframe operating system such, such as uh, VM, ZVM, uh, MBS, ZOS, VSC. It makes beautiful prints that looks just like the prints we used to have back in the 80s. Then he has. A, a, a driver, if you want to call it that way, that makes um, that makes 31-bit operating and 64-bit operating systems such as Linux on top of Hercules be able to interface with the outside world through through the Ethernet. And then there is this uh, um, tape browser that allows you to look into a tape to see what's in there before you actually play it in. Sometimes you need to look into a tape to see what is the blocking factor, what is was the name of the data set so you can properly import it into either ZVM or VM or, or MVS. So he's the developer of this and he's also the main developer of um, of Hercules. Uh, this is David Trout Fish based in uh, Washington State. And so he split from the main group and he's now running his own uh, Fish GitHub repository for Hyperion. Then there is um, the Hercules 4.0 port maintained by uh, uh, Jurgen himself, the maintainer of TK4, because as you know, when you download TK4, it already includes a Hercules 4.0 implementation, which is a 4.0 with some of the patches applied by Jurgen. But however, this version is now about almost three years old, so a lot of the enhancements and features that came into Hercules 4.0 over the last two, three years are not in the version currently, uh, which is uh, TQ4 update eight. Whenever update nine comes out, I'm quite sure that Jürgen will put in all the latest worthwhile patches back into his own main, uh, main, uh, branch of Hercules 4.0. Then there is the one maintained um, by, can we find it? Uh, we can't, so let's look for it, Hyperion. GitHub, uh, Hercules, Hyperion. Then there is this one, which is the, uh, which is, I would, I would probably call this the main version of Hercules. And you can see this also by the number of issues on the, on the issue tracker. There's 87 uh, reports, uh, issues reported for this version of, this branch of our Hyperion development and the own uh, and fish's own repository has only like 20 issues so i think most people use this uh, hercules version 
and then there's maybe two or three or four other versions out there and so it's important to understand that there's currently at least five main uh, Hercules Hyperion which is Hercules 4.0 development branches and you should be very aware of which one you're downloading obviously Fish also makes available uh, pre-compiled binaries uh, maybe is it here Hyperion yeah so if you go to Fish's website soft development software development labs he also makes pre-built binaries available for Windows not for Linux because it doesn't make much sense to provide uh, pre-built binaries for Linux you should always compile according to the version that you're running and so this is for instance from May 2013 includes the QH ET, QETH uh, driver for Zilli for Zilli Linux networking a um, bunch of uh, bunch of uh, bug fixes and as you can see every month or two he releases a new version and if you're using Windows to run Hercules then obviously what you can download it from here although you can also build yourself from just the source code which you can download um, from from the Hyperion SDL branch of uh, Hyperion uh, 4.0 uh, however, if you're on Linux, uh, there's no pre-built binaries because, as you know, if I do, um, I don't know which Hercules I have here. So, yeah, so this is a good example I, on this system here, which is just a virtual machine running somewhere in my home lab. Uh, I have copied. This is the Hercules version that comes with TK4 update eight. However, as I mentioned, this is about um, two or three years old already by now and it works fine um, as you can see here this was built on March 2017 so this is two and a half years old already and uh, whenever update 9 of TK4 comes out then Jurgen will compile a new one I'm sure with a lot of the uh, patches and bug fixes which is backporting to his own maintained Hercules 4.0 branch however um, Today we're going to see how to compile our own Hercules. Um, so for that purpose, what we could do if we wanted to run in Hercules, I'm running here Ubuntu 16.4, um, which is uh, oh, actually a, quite an old kernel, but that's okay. Okay, so you'll see that this is Ubuntu 14.04, actually, an older version. Uh, we could easily update it to 16.04 or 18.04, but I like to... 14.04 works fine and it is much, uh, has a much lower um, footprint on, in memory and processor cycle, so that's why I keep running this. So, if I wanted to install Hercules, so either I could use the one from uh, MBS 3.8 as delivered by TK4. I could also do apt install apt install Hercules and then let's see what comes down. Okay, so I would have to first update my Linux here with apt update. I'm running Ubuntu as you just saw. Okay, so apt install Hercules. Oh, okay, so Hercules is already installed uh, to remove Hercules. Let's see what it removes. Yeah, so it's removing Hercules 3.07, which is a very old version of Hercules. So we don't want to run a Hercules version that's at least five years old. Um, so the other way to do it is build our own Hercules. How do we do that? So um, let's go to the website we just had open here and let's find this version here this is the one i recommend you use it's uh, github.com github slash hercules 390 hyperion and then you go here and you see this repository and we just download this one and we do it like this and we say git clone and then whatever what do you copy here this you need to copy and then put it here. Oh, I have to install git first. I have to install git. So 
22 megabytes. 30 years ago, this would have been a whole hard disk just for one program. Anyway, so git clone. Okay, it downloaded it. Okay, let's go into Hyperion. And then in Hyperion, there is a, a subdirectory called util, utils. And here there is a little uh, shell script. If you run this shell script, it will tell you what tools you need to build Hyperion. So it tells us we need autoconf, automake, flex. Uh, we don't have a GCC compiler. We don't have M4, the micro generated. We don't have, uh, we don't have make installed. So um, here you want to pay very close attention. If you need to freeze, do that. So you do like this apt install, and then we just take the ones we need, which are auto, auto conf, auto make, GCC, M4, make. And then um, you also will need this once. So it will do as I say, because I just know we need the C compiler and uh, flex okay so there's another 160 megabytes it would have been a hard disk a whole new hard disk just 20 years ago okay it's not downloading all those i will print the line again here just as soon as we finish so you can see what it is you need to install okay apt install autoconf automake gcc m4 make g plus plus even though it's not listed before and flex okay i'll highlight it so maybe it's easier for you to read this way so once you did this we run the tools check again yes and this time it says we have everything once you've done that we go and into the hyperion top directory again i go into hyperion here and we run autogen.sh and it tells us we need to change a few things so so this version of hyperion does not support building inside uh, the source code directory itself you have to build from the outside create a build directory where object modes are, are stored so So let's build this, make directory. Ah. This first, and then Hyperion, and change to this directory, and then we do configure. Right, so we run configure this way. So this tells us we need to build uh, first the soft float, the floating point uh, separately. That's I guess why fish has split from this. We could go and do that, do all those and build those at the soft float. However, you will realize that uh, at this point that this version of Hyperion is just a um, nightmare to build. So what we're going to do is we're going to built the fish version which already has everything built in so let's look for it sdl github um hyperion let's do this sdl hyperion hercules fish this will take us to this 
I guess this is the one. Yeah. So, um, as you can see, that he has his own branch here, so we copy this one. Okay, get clone. It looks very similar from the outside, but it's actually quite different. So, go in here, we go into the util and run the check again, just to see, okay. So now here we do that this autogen.sh this command here and this went well so then we do configure now if we build it this way Hercules will run fine however it will not have support for uh, compressed DAS these compressed disk images, which can compress either with the Zilib, the uncompress uh, library, or with the uh, BZ uh, unzip libraries. Both are supported. So, in order to do that, we need to first install those libraries. So, to find those, you probably Ivan Warren, which is who is one of the main developers of the Hyperion branch, and you do Hyperion. Zilip, Bizilib, search like this, Ivan Warren, Hyperion, Zilip, Bizilib, and you will find a discussion on, um, in a discussion group, and it tells you which libraries to install. So you copy this one, and it is two libraries. So the first one is Zilip 1G minus dev, small library but very important one and then we also installed the other one tap to install libbz to dev and again if you need to stop stop and freeze the video okay so now we did this um, so we do a configure again because the configure needs to know that the zilib libraries are available and now it builds the make files accordingly Somewhere here, it will say busy. Yeah, here it is. It found it. This machine is quite fast because I have NVMe disk, which is blazing fast. Okay, so now we say make. And it will start to make Hyperion. And this will take a while. So while we do that, we can see here there's a few issues have been reported. Some by me. This happens to be me. So I'm sometimes reporting bugs that I find. And of course, any big and complex software uh, project will have bugs. That's just very normal. As you can see here, they can also run ZOS 2.3 in research mode uh, that's obviously not for any real use this is only computer science research you shouldn't run anything that you have no license for so it's compiling this will take maybe another minute or so so just make is the command you write Should have started the screen session so we could we could uh, switch to another screen and see what the computer is doing. I will not pause this video now until the compilation is done, just to give you a good feeling of how long this should take for a fast computer. Again, this is a uh, fast computer because of the the disk is electronic. So if you have as a real spinning iron drive uh, will be somewhat s s uh, slower maybe by factor of two or so and this has also plenty of uh, ram i think it's a 16 gigabyte 
machine, which sounded two years ago, 16 gigabytes sounded like a crazy amount of RAM for a Linux computer. Now it starts to sound like boring and a year from now it will be small. Um, I cannot believe that, you know, 20 years ago I was running Linux 2.2 SMP on a computer with uh, 64 megabytes of RAM just fine. And I'm sure I couldn't boot now this kernel in 64 megabytes. So yeah, Linux was known in the old days for being very resource efficient. It's not anymore. It's just like Windows. Uh, you can run Linux on two gigabytes, but you really want four gigabytes to do anything of significance. And eight gigabyte is preferred. And you'll see within two years, 32 gigabyte is the preferred. Uh, so the resource efficiency of Linux has kind of been lost on the way I want to say but that's okay RAM is not cheap right now uh, for the last couple of months RAM has been quite expensive but um, yeah it's getting it keeps getting cheaper by the way um, Intel released new NUC computers my favorite uh, way to build a home lab Intel NUC 8th generation those are yeah you can buy them for four hundred dollars Yeah, so they have with i7 up to 4.5 gigahertz. Um, yeah, all the eight, NUC eight means eighth generation. So they're they're actually very good. Um, I have like six or seven of those and put NVMe disks of 512 or one terabyte and they're blazing fast and uh, putting 32 gigabytes of memory. They're great machines to run ESX on it. I would recommend either ES, ESX uh, 6.0 or 5.5. The latest version 6.5, 6.6, they become a little bit more picky about the hardware. So, but 6.0 runs just fine on these machines and, and, and it's just as good as ESX 6.5. Um, so while this is building, as you can see, there's quite a bit of source code. I don't know how many lines, I want to say maybe 400,000 lines, 300,000 lines of source code for Oracleism. So um, you should get one of those machines if you, and you know, if you put two or three together, you have a nice cluster to run ESX on and, um, and uh, you can do uh, high availability, you can do all kinds of interesting things with it. Should be almost done now. 3705 communication. That's the communication controller, which is it is emulating. 3088, which is the coupling facility. So it's it's building all those parts, parts of uh, mainframe. And software, obviously, card reader. 3505, 280, 3525, which is a card reader. And now it's building those commands we use. Test in it to create a new DASD. There's always warnings when you compile because indentation sometimes is not doesn't like the indentation, but those are just warnings. You can disregard those. If it will stop compilation, then you have a real problem. If it doesn't stop compilation, it should be okay. By the way, this compiles with uh, optimization 2. Um, I know the Jurgen compiles with optimization 3, but on older processors, so it's compatible with everything. So this is it. It's uh, it finished it. Now to install it, you will do make, make install. The other thing we need to do is remove the um, version of Hercules 3.07 which we installed with the apt-get command. So let's do that so we don't confuse versions here. Okay. Oh, we had already removed it. That's fine. And then we need to also make sure we don't um, use the Hercules that it's already installed. This one, the one that came from TK4. So let's move this. the path libraries 
because I was pointing to the Jurgen Winkelmann version of Herc. So let's do that. Launch a new screen. Now, if you say which Hercules, then it will say user local bin Hercules. So, alrighty, and this is the one which was compiled by Soft Development Labs, uh, August 18, GCC 484, and um, that's the, the one we just built. You always want to check if you have bzip support, yes, zilip support, yes. So this will now run pretty much anything out there, uh, any kind of version of uh, operating system with the mainframe this would run um, including of course um, the normal tk4 so you could do a close of tk4 uh, as you can see this would run it as well right we could now ipl from one of the disks and run tk4 so it doesn't have to be and right version and this is it uh, the one we just compiled a few minutes ago okay now that we've built and uh, tested our first hercules we can start to optimize things and the first thing we need to optimize or we want to optimize is uh, the, the performance the speed of execution and, and uh, fortunately the compiler or the compilers both GCC and clan because as you know in the Linux world we have two C compilers we have GCC and we have clan which I don't have installed here but clan uh, G GCC was forked at one point into into clang or clang and uh, and the two have gone kind of separate ways and Hercules can be compiled by both um, or some even want to use the Intel C compilers which are excellent which is an excellent compiler so but I stick with GCC but there's some things which we can do which is to turn on the optimization in the GCC compiler and it is an optim an, an excellent optimizer so we want to we want to certainly turn that on how do we do that well I have here um, I have here um, the command written down somewhere I think build so when we run the configure statement then we can use the enable optimization um, directive and that's what we're gonna that's what I'm gonna copy now so I go into the Hyperion source repository we will make it clean obviously So that it will clean up all the um, make files. Now, one thing here about that I haven't mentioned enough in this video, which is, it is of course discouraged, and that's why the other Hyperion branch was enforcing it. It is discouraged to build in the same directory where the source is, even though I do it all the time. Um, you could, of course, go to a different directory called, you know, like here, uh, build directory something like this and then and then execute the uh, and then do the build from within that directory um, so you don't have the the build files and the source all in the same directory it would be better to do it but um, I, I just like to do it fast and dirty quick and dirty so I do it this way so um, here's how we turn on the optimization course we do this step which we've already done and then we would run the um, the optimization so there's several levels of optimization there's two and three O3 three, optimization three is the most aggressive one of uh, of the various levels of optimizations that GCC can perform and it it is supposed to be safe um, so Hercules is supposed to run with O3 and in fact if you use the Hercules that comes supplied with TK4 Jurgen Winkelmann's distribution of MVS that has been compiled with O3 the one difference is that he compiles it with optimization 3 turned on on very uh, basic and ancient uh, processors 
uh, if I remember correctly, he's doing it on Intel Duo, which is a which is a, uh, an old processor from about 10 years ago. And why is that important? Because if you do O3 optimization with that CPU architecture, then most more most modern or if not all modern CPUs will have support for that. If you do it the other way around, if you if you build with O3 optimization on a very very modern processor such as AMD. Uh, what is it called, Ryzen or on the i7 or Intel i9 and then you want to run it on an older processor then because the pro the optimization will make use of all the latest features of the modern processor it may not run uh, well or not at all on an older processor so here I have an i7 on this machine and I'm only gonna I always built uh, Hercules on every machine I'm running on so I never really copy the binaries so for me it's not a problem but just be aware that O3 if you port it to other machines um, build Hercules on the oldest CPU architecture you have and then copy the newer ones not the other way around so we do here configure can I spell okay if you do it like this, we enable optimization O3, and you can actually feel the performance boost by turning optimization on. It's quite substantial. So I would always recommend, I would always recommend for you to turn on optimization with a command. And I'm going to put this command for the optimization in the description below this video because it's complicated enough that you don't have to type it off from this video. Um, you can just copy it from the description below this video. So that's it. So now I make, uh, if you turn it with minus J, this will turn it on for, uh, do, are we inside the screen here? Yes. So you will see that if I do make minus J, it will run on all the threads of this machine. I have four CPUs here. So make is, is executing on as many processes as it, or threads or cores as it finds. So yeah, it's as you can see here, it's uh, it's running now on all the cores. So that's with the minus J, make minus J. And it's also using as much memory as it can find, almost all the memory it's being used. So it's building again. And uh, you can see here, the machine is now fully utilized. And the build process. So this should take about a minute or two, um, not more than that. So this is um, this is uh, the other part I just wanted to show about the optimization. I would always encourage you to turn on optimization. You will feel the performance boost. Okay, so it's done. So now we do make install. I don't know if you realize, but by doing a make minus J for multi-core, it's actually quite a bit faster. Maybe by a factor of about three times. Okay, so it installed. Let's see. And we're done. So now let's see if this works. Yeah, it comes up. It doesn't say anything about the optimization used, but, um, but we turned it on. So it comes up. Now we'd have to test it on something, but um, I don't have it right now, I think. Maybe have a Zelinux around. Uh, nope, I don't. I don't have a Zelinux. Oh, maybe yes. Yes. Uh, where do we IPL from? Oh, I think it's from yes so this is going to come up now yep 
yes. In the meantime, let's go prepare the network. So I will set the network. So, which consists in uh, turning on port forwarding and turning on proxy ARP um, so that packets can go through the CTC interface. Let's see what we have here. Yeah, the tunnel is up. And this is a, a port point to point connection. So we need the uh, ARP proxying to be turned on. Okay, Linux, Z Linux. This is uh, mainframe Linux is coming up. Yeah, looks like it's up. So let's try. Yes. And we're in. So this works fine. So we just compiled our own Hercules and we're testing it. This is now Linux running inside the mainframe, as you can see here the S390 architecture and it runs fine so um, what we've seen is uh, the various branches of Linux that exist today is particularly of Hyperion the new branch that uh, we're on which people are developing and bringing Hercules forward we know that anything that's three point something is a backport uh, we know that there are several branches of it and we looked at the ones that we use which is the the Jürgen Winkelmann version of Hercules 4.0, which is about almost three years old, that comes with TK4 Update 8. Um, just yesterday, uh, he mentioned that he's working on Update 9, but that could still be a half a year off. Then we have the one, um, the main um, Hercules Hyperion 4.0 branch, and this is the one run by Fish. We saw how to build and compile it and then we saw how to build a compile with optimization turned on which i recommend you do and that's about it for this video uh, thank you for watching if you like this particular video please do press the thumbs up button if you have any comments of course comment below the video i always read those and i'm always thankful for all comments and if you uh, haven't subscribed to the Moshix mainframe channel yet, I would urge you to subscribe now. And if you uh, want to have a free account on, um, on my MBS instance in the cloud, you go to moshix.dynu.net. As you can see here, you'll land on this webpage, fill out this form, send submit, and you will get an account for free for me on our MBS um, um, instance. It's running 24-7 and uh, we have about 100 users on it and uh, doing stuff and it's uh, a fun community anyway thank you and have a nice day goodbye